despite fans rejoice as we finally have the return of Argentina's own Santiago Ponzinibbio taking on Li Jingliang from China and that overall very interesting matchup here because for Li Jingliang he was originally supposed to be taking on Dwight Grant back in December that fight fell out because Dwight Grant ended up with COVID so Jingliang gets booked the next month against a guy that nobody really wants to fight in Santiago Ponzinibbio and for Ponzinibbio a huge win streak he talks about it a lot himself but he's won seven in a row and if you look at some of the bookings that you know fell through he was supposed to take on Kamaru Usman back in 2018 had a hand injury he was supposed to take on Robbie Lawler back in 2019 out due to injury he was originally supposed to be taking on Muslim Salikov in this fight but Salikov out due to COVID complications so again in steps Li Jingliang but you look at the quality of opponent and it just keeps getting better for Santiago Ponzinibbio a guy that was on the ultimate fighter Brazil season two had a win over Leonardo Santos one of my all-timers that I always look forward to fighting or having fight but you look at the wins Andre Stahl uh, Court McGee, Zach Cummins, Norton Taleb, Gunnar Nelson, Mike Perry, and then Neil Magny in a main event, UFC Fight Night 140. And for Santiago Ponzinibbio, this is one of those guys like Kevin Lee that a lot of people have always said, future champ. Santiago Ponzinibbio is really going to get over that hump. Matt, the reason why Santiago Ponzinibbio hasn't gotten over that hump and has been out for a very, very long time, just over two years, I got to bring these up. Uh, the injuries have been plentiful he's had a, a bone a, he's had a blood infection staph infection um he had a bone injury he had arthritis he had that hand injury as well like it's just been bad hand after bad hand for Santiago Ponzinibbio quite literally and at least we get to see him fight here it, it's really tricky to tell exactly what you're going to get and I got to talk about the odds before I hand it off because Santiago Ponzinibbio open a minus 275 favorite he's now minus 285 if we look at Lee Jing Leong open a plus 235 now a plus 230 slight line movement for Lee Jing Leong Santiago Ponzinibbio a really big favorite in here you have to assume that you're going to get 100% Santiago Ponzinibbio with our with arthritis in a leg uh bone infection uh, blood infection and then side effects to medication like if you saw the pictures of Ponzinibbio when this happened his face blew up like his body blew up and started fighting against him like it's just crazy Alex Smith almost got his leg completely taken off and look at him now he's the starting quarterback for a team in the playoffs again I don't think the infection side of things is what you really have to focus on with Ponzinibbio with infections you can get over them it's not like you're gonna have those long-term problems I understand he is at an advanced age but it's not like he's been taking damage throughout the past couple of years and I think that's a really important part because we see some fighters they take time off and they just don't look like the same fighter when they come back because you realize okay maybe they weren't training to the same effect as they were when they were an active fighter we saw that with uh, Verdum when he came back. Verdum looked terrible against Olenek, and then he looked like a world champion again when he had fought Gustafsson. With Ponzinibbio, we do have to assume that this is 100% Ponzinibbio. And for the odds, if Ponzinibbio had been active through the past couple of years, let's say he made a loss like once or twice to elite guys, he would be a minus 500 against Li Jingliang. Like, people forget how good Santiago Ponzinibbio was when he did start to get this, you know, string of bad luck. If overhands and calf kicks were a person, they would be Santiago Ponzinibbio. And really, his striking game is a lot more than just that. But though, that's the bread and butter. He has some of the better calf kicks you'll see across the UFC. And he's really smart with setting up his kicks from his punches and really vice versa. He can throw single shots because he is so heavy-handed. And I, I think the hand speed of Ponzinibbio is another really important thing you have to bring up. It's not just the fact that he's going out there Francis Ngannou style and if he hits you, you go to sleep. Ponzinibbio's hands are absurdly fast and he can throw crazy combinations and then just really emphasize one strike out of the combo to throw with a lot of power and that's how he catches guys the Andreas Stahl fighting yes it's not like Stahl is the highest level of competition but just the way he was able to go there and finish him that combination is absolutely beautiful and with Li Jing Liang, we see just many different versions of him the fighter who fought Elysio Zaleski de Santos you're like wow he knocked him out. He dropped him in the first round. TK was him in the third. It's like, wow, he's really impressive. And then you go back not that long before, and he gets absolutely destroyed by Jake Matthews, who a fighter in my mind definitely isn't on the same level as Santiago Ponzinibbio. Now, I understand styles make fights in Ponzinibbio and Matthews. Not like they fight very similar, but I, I think people just have forgot how good and how special of a talent Ponzinibbio is. I like this for his litmus test coming back into the UFC because Li Jingliang, like I said, he's going to give you an exciting fight. He's going to bring the fight to you. It just it matters on how you react to what he's bringing. And if Ponzinibbio is at 100%, he should be able to just kind of wait for the counters, wait for the counters. 
And if Jake Matthews can drop Li Jing Liang twice, Pon Sinibio can look at you the wrong way and put you down. I just really like the power in the overall game of Pon Sinibio. I'm not going to lie, though, and I'm going to let this be known right now. I thought he was going to beat Kamara Usman before they fought and before Usman ended up fighting Damian Maya. Now, I understand that was years ago. People didn't really figure out how good Usman was, but that's the amount of stock I had in Santiago Ponzinibbio two short years ago. And I mean, it's crazy, Matt. Li Jing Leon coming out of China top team, and when he fights in China, he looks absolutely amazing. And when he fights outside of China, it just doesn't go his way. And we saw that in his last fight against Neil Magny. That one back at UFC 248 when you had Yoel Romero and Israel Adesanya in one of the best fights i've ever seen but overall for lee jing Young didn't go his way against neil magny so then you book him against santiago ponzinibbio and there's stories out there this week where ponzinibbio thinks it's crazy that he's not in the rankings anymore boo hoo but he's definitely a top 15 fighter oh, on his yeah. best day on his best day and on his worst day well we haven't seen his worst day in a very long time so i'm eager to see what we get out of ponzinibbio for me again confidence level a couple of years ago versus confidence level now I like Ponzinibbio for what he's worth, but uh, this is one that I would hesitate to bet on just due to the fact that he's a huge favorite and we haven't seen him in a long time. He could come out here and again look like Fabrizio Verdum did in his return fight, or he could look like Fabrizio Verdum that wants to get paid by the PFL. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to get out of Ponzinibbio, but I will agree with you in this fact. Whether Li Jing Liang wins a fight or loses a fight, the guy comes out here like his topology picture and he will run in with hooks, he'll throw kicks to the body like the David Zavada fight. He'll throw kicks to the head. He'll mix everything in really well. There's not one aspect of his game that's like, wow, Li Jing Liang's a power puncher. Li Jing Liang's a wrestler. No, he does everything very well. And that's the thing about him. He's a really tough out for a lot of guys. And again, bookended losses, Jake Matthews and Neil Magny. And then you look at the wins that he has. Well, Daichi Abe, not UFC caliber. Then the win over David Zavada. Well, he's on this card. He's pretty good. Eliseo Zaleski de Santos, lately, a lot to be desired, but at the time, you're right. That's a really good win. So for Li Jing Leon coming in here, big underdog. Topology predictions, 1,005 of them so far. 90% at Ponzinibbio, 54% by knockout, 38% by decision. I'm going to go Ponzinibbio by decision in this one here. I, I respect that. I'm even going to say finish. I think Ponzinibbio, this could be one of those y'all must have forgot. And I do think the UFC is going to immediately put him in the rankings if he is able to get a win. And I feel like the reason they took him out was definitely due to inactivity, not because of anything he had done in the cage. And on his worst day, he's worse than Lorenz Larkin, I guess. But that was years ago and something that it's not like Li Jing Liang can fight like Lorenz Larkin. I like Ponzinibbio. I like him moving forward in the division. I'm excited to see him back in the UFC, though. Matt, I wish we got to see Lorenz Larkin fight in 2020. So Bellator, come on. But overall, I think if Ponzinibbio wins this fight, I mean, there's a short list of fighters that he could face. Who doesn't want to see Leon Edwards. Ponzinibbio against Leon Edwards, against Wonderboy Thompson? Like, we're talking divisions those elite. Into my veins. Please give us those fights. And if Li Jing Liang picks up a win here, holy smokes, top 15. We're giving him some top books and bookings as well. But again, fans, the odds, everybody going with Santiago Ponzinibbio. Let us know down below who you're going with. We're going with Santiago Ponzinibbio. And we have a great fight card coming up. We have two really big fights to profile after this one. And Condit and Brown in their main event, Max Holloway taking on Calvin Cater. So keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks, Matt. As we always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.